welcome to episode 58 of the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. My name is Ali. I live in Kent in the very southeast of the UK with my husband and our two daughters. Uh, my podcast is all about knitting and crochet and crafty things, all of the good stuff. And I also share regular vlog series on my channel about my daily life. And I'm doing a series at the moment, which I started uh, just as lockdown happened. Uh, my intention was to do regular daily vlogs throughout April and I started them early and I may continue them on into May depending on what happens in the world and how I'm doing and all of that. But if you would like to watch that um, vlog series, the link is on the screen. Now it's also underneath this video. Also underneath this video, you will find timestamps and all the information related to the things that I talk about in this podcast. And what else, what else? Oh, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Starry Eyes Alley. And there is a podcast group, no, there is a Ravelry group for this podcast called Little Drops of Wonderful on Ravelry. If you're interested in joining in there, it tends to be where we do the giveaways, threads and chatting about um, make-alongs and so on and so forth. I think that's everything. I think that's everything I need to tell you for the introduction. Um, oh yes, a few people have asked for a little update on the snail mail swap that I um, started running in February. So if you wanna go and take a look at day seven of my vlogs, and I will link it underneath this video specifically. Um, hang on, I'll just put a little action next to that so I remember to do it, because my memory is not always the greatest. Um, if you go and watch that, I've put an explanation in there. Um, most people are okay and are set up and are paired up. Up. but if you're not we're just going to have to draw a line under it now and basically I'll be running another one later in the year but go and watch day seven and it's all there I won't repeat myself and be boring okay so today I'm going to talk about finished objects works in progress an incoming thing um, a couple of blasts from the past or things from your or projects from your I can never remember what I call them and some giveaway winners and plenty of other chattering, chatting, chattering, chatter, chattering, rambling and getting my words wrong in between. So let's get started straight away with finished objects. Now, neither of my finished objects are here in the room with me. I'm going to put pictures up and if you've been watching my vlogs, you will have seen them on there as well. So the first finished object um, has been handed over to my friend who works at the local hospital. They are little crocheted hearts and the pattern that I used is by Grace and Yarn and it's a free pattern. It's just called the Mini Amigurumi Heart. Once you've made a few, you can really just do it without um, even, you can just do it by counting really um, for the first bits. And then when you join to make them into a heart, I just use a scrap piece of yarn to keep track of where I am. And then you, again, you can just, um, it's very simple you don't need to refer to the pattern they're really enjoyable to make and I made these for the local hospital uh, my friend who works there put a call out for people to, uh, knitters to make knitted hearts but I didn't get on very well with the knitted heart pattern so I decided to find a crochet one instead which she said is absolutely fine and they are going to the palliative care team at the local hospital and they're going to be given out to uh, the relatives of dying patients who can't be um, they can't be together because of the coronavirus pandemic um, and it'll be a way of having a keepsake, something that their loved one had with them when they died that the relatives then can then keep as in memory of them. So I've made about a dozen and I've told her that if they would like some more, I'm more than happy to um, keep making them. It's not very often that having crochet or knitting as your superpower actually comes in very useful. <laughs> So I was more than happy to do it to help the local hospital. Um, the other finished object that I have is also a bit related to um, the coronavirus pandemic. It feels like everything is at the moment, doesn't it? Um, we're doing, um, I, blah, blah, blah. my girls and I have been decorating the front window, well, mainly the girls with rainbows, which is what we're doing here in the UK. I understand other countries are doing things like sharing teddy bears in their windows, putting up their Christmas lights and, and all different types of things. But here in the UK, children are drawing rainbows and you see them absolutely everywhere. And even households without children um, have either got things that have been sent to them by their grandchildren or they've done something themselves. And people are putting rainbows up to brighten the days of people who are walking past on their allowed uh, daily walks or to show support for 
the NHS and the key workers and all types of things like that. So everywhere you go at the moment, you see rainbows. And our window's full of them because <laughs> our girls have been very busy. And I made a crocheted uh, little rainbow hanging thing, which was a pattern by Sandra of Cherry Heart. And I also made some um, a little ball, rainbow ball garland. I crocheted little balls using the um, Attic 24 uh, pattern, which is free on her blog. They were really addictive to make. I really enjoyed making those. <laughs> and I think I might have to make more. Uh, they're the kind of thing you don't need to look at the pattern at all. You can just do it all by counting and they're so satisfying. And to have a little bowl full of them, oh, addictive, totally addictive. Um, so we've got a garland of those hanging in the window as well. Um, and earlier on in the vlog series that I'm doing, I suggested that maybe I opened a thread on Ravelry and, and then someone suggested we have a little hashtag. So the hashtag is wonderful rainbow windows. So if you're making some crochet or knitted things to hang in your windows, you can share it on Instagram or Ravelry or anywhere else using that hashtag so we can all see what everyone's doing. It's not for prizes, it's just for fun. And there's a thread that I'll link below to Ravelry where we're all having a little chat about the things we're doing and I've created a bundle of ideas and I keep trying to add to that when people make suggestions. I'm a little bit behind because I always get behind. But um, it's definitely worth having a look at that bundle. It's a really cheerful, inspirational collection of things to, to make. Cool. slow down. I feel like I've just, all I've done is rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. And I've not actually shown you anything very interesting yet. Um, the other finished things that I've got are not knitted or crocheted. I made a couple of dodgy bags. Um, I'm not even sure if it's worth showing you these, but seeing as I'm thin on the ground for finished objects, I will. Um, I made some dodgy bags because I was making some as gifts and presents and things, although half of them are all packaged up and I can't send them. So I can't get to the post office at the moment. Uh, this one I think I'm going to keep for me. It's just a little shopping bag, a little over the shoulder shopping bag um, with my favourite lobster fabric. And these are a pair of my old jeans that I cut up for the bottom. I've just lined it in white and I could put like a fastening on it or something, but it really is just going to be for shopping, like as in fruit and veg and stuff like that. So it's going it, to, I don't think having an opening on it would be necessary. It's not like I'm keeping my purse in there or anything. So that's just a dodgy bag. The pattern I made up, I'm happy to share the dimensions of all the panels and what I did to do it. If you'd be interested in me making a little tutorial about that, uh, maybe for one of my vlogs, I would be more than happy to do it. I am not a sewer and my techniques would probably have most um, sewers like, like gasping and clutching their pearls, but uh, <laughs> um, I do manage to produce a bag that somewhat holds together and can be useful so this one i'm keeping this one's going to go in into the prize uh, pile i like to keep a little pile of um dodgy bags ready to go for prizes or thank yous and things like that i had this um scotty dog fabric left over phoebe actually had this fabric as a covering for the table when she had a scotland themed birthday party a few years ago um, and I've got, um, I made a few bits for her with it and I just had a tiny bit left. So I thought I'll make a little dodgy bag. Um, it's with a zip, which I don't often do. And it's just got a gray lining. So that's quite fun. So I'm gonna put that into the little um, prize pile. So that's all of my finished objects. Moving on to works in progress. Right, I have a new work in progress on the go. It's not actually got an official bag yet. It's just living in this little canvas bag. So I was given an advent um, at Christmas and I saved it to open in April because it's my birthday month. Now it was a 12 day advent. So there were only 12 parcels and I opened them in line with the days of April, which actually worked out that I opened them in the 12 days leading up to and including Easter Sunday, which I hadn't realized would happen. So that was really, really good. It worked out really nicely and I opened the final two yesterday, which was Easter Sunday, because I'm filming this on Bank Holiday Monday, which is why I'm filming this in my bedroom again, because obviously the whole family is at home today, as we all are every day at the moment. Um, so that's why I'm filming up here in my bedroom. 
So I started a, a granny stripe blanket. I've never made one. I know that loads and loads of people have made granny stripe blankets using minis and scraps and, and stuff like that. And I've always resisted doing it. But I so enjoyed doing an advent shawl that I made over the last three years. And it has been used a lot since we've been all at home. It's been quite warm over the last few days. But today the temperature's dropped again, which is lovely because I'm more of a cold weather girl than I am a hot weather girl. Uh, but the advent shawl that I've made has been in constant use on the sofa and everyone just absolutely loves it. But it's a huge triangle, which is, which is fine, but I thought it'd be really nice to have an actual blanket shaped one. So I worked out the how many um, clusters were along the long edge of my advent shawl that I previously made and it worked out at exactly 100 and that was a really good what I thought was a really good um not length a width for the blanket and then I worked out how many I would need to cast on to do an attic 24 granny stripe blanket and it was a 300 302 I'm using um four ply uh, weight yarn and a 3.25 millimeter hook so I started with a chain of 302 and that gives me uh, 98 full three clusters and then the little clusters that you get at either end and these are my Nora George advent yarns which were a gift from lovely Hilary who is a, a huge friend and supporter of um, me and this podcast so thank you Hilary I appreciate it so much and the yarns are gorgeous the advent actually came with a pattern to make but I decided to use them for this project instead and I'm really really glad that I did so oh here's how it's looking I am on to colour number 10 at the moment this top one here that is colour number 10 and then I'll have two more to go in and then I can start moving on to other minis. So I think I'm going to try and keep them speckly because all of these are kind of speckly minis. So I think I'm going to try and keep all of the minis that I use in this project as speckly ones. But I'm absolutely loving it. Sometimes I don't have a lot of brain power at the moment, especially by the time the days feel very long because obviously we're here at home all the time. And although we do get out into the garden and we do do things throughout the day, and we do try to get out for walks most days. We're here and it, you know, we're getting up at sort of seven or half seven in the morning and the kids don't go to, well, Phoebe goes to bed by, she's in bed, lights out by half eight on a normal day when it's not the holidays. Lilia doesn't go up to about half nine or sometimes she goes up at nine and reads for a bit. So these are long days that we are on duty, um, so to speak. And by the time I get to the evening, even though I dream about sitting down and crocheting or knitting all day, by the time I get there, I just don't have the brain to do it. So something as simple and soothing as this sometimes is the only thing I can think about working on. So I'm really, really enjoying it. Okay, my next work in progress. I spoke about this one last time. By the way, every time I bend down, you're gonna see how gray my hair is. <laughs> I really, really need to dye it. I do have some dye. It's just finding a space in the day when I can actually dye my hair and then rinse it out and then dry it and all of that. I did manage to trim my own fringe a little bit. You may not even notice because I wasn't very brave about it. I was very, very gingerly, tiny, tiny little bits. But um, I think I've done quite a, a good job. Not as good as the hairdresser, but not bad. So this is my Waru shawl. It's living in my bag by lovely Lynn. She donated a bag as a prize and also gave one to me. So it's got lovely yellow fabric with um, cactus on it. And in it is my Waru shawl, which is a pattern by Diane Ramsey. I spoke about this last time and I couldn't remember if I where I was at, but I've got a feeling I haven't made any progress on it. So apologies if I'm just showing you exactly the same thing I showed you last time because um, I don't think I've made any progress on it. But what I wanted to say, which is less about this project and more about me working on works in progress. By the way, this beautiful blue. Ooh, this beautiful blue colour is by Mrs S Creations. It's so pretty and it's really, really working up beautifully. This is her card, which has got a very apt rainbow on it. And the colour, I'm sure it was called 
what was her colour? I'm sure it's called Seascape or something. Yes, Seascape. It's her titanium sock base, 7525 merino nylon. Um, but what I wanted to say was, um, I don't seem to be making a whole lot of progress on any one thing at the moment. And I think it's because I'm flitting. That's how, it feels like that with everything I'm doing, whether it's crafting or the other things I'm doing or housework or, you know, life admin. I'm flitting and I'm not getting my head into any one thing and doing sort of start, middle, end. And I think I need to start forcing myself to do that because it's not a nice feeling when you're not accomplishing. And I don't mean I need to be on a constant roll of getting things done, getting things done, accomplish, accomplish, finish, finish. I just mean it's nice to know you're making progress <laughs> in life generally. So I think what I'm going to start to do is work monogamously on things for a week at a time. So for today's Monday, so maybe I'll pick a project, one of my works in progress, and only work on that up until Sunday and then switch over again next Monday. So at least I can see things growing and progressing and that might just make me feel a little more anchored and calm, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so I don't think I've made progress on that. It's a very long-winded way of saying I haven't done anything, isn't it? Um, my next work in progress that I wanted to talk about um, is, right, you're all going to groan, but it's my as if tea. So I've talked about this a lot on the vlogs. I'm not going to go into this a lot right now because I also spoke about it last time. But it's off the needles again and it's about to be ripped back again. Um, I had I've had terrible problems with gauge. This is my lovely bag by Caroline Love to Sew, by the way. I absolutely love this bag. So at least, if nothing else, the longer I work on this project, the longer this bag's on the sofa. So that's nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been having terrible problems with getting my gauge to settle properly. So many of you have offered me lots of very kind help. Thank you. And it turns out my last gauge measurement, I'd actually got it wrong. I thought I was working at, so the pattern calls for 18, 18, no, yeah, 18 stitches per four inches for the gauge. And I was getting what I thought was 32 stitches. So it, I thought my gauge was a lot smaller, which would have meant the pattern should be smaller. But my, when I started knitting, it was coming out a lot bigger than I expected. But it turns out I was using a two inch gauge measuring thing rather than a, which, and I thought it was a one inch one. I'd also used a ruler to measure over four inches as well. Um, but somehow I had just got it wrong. So I wasn't getting eight stitches per inch. I was getting 4.5, which was half a stitch more per inch. So over four inches, that was two inches, no, two stitches more over four inches. So actually my gauge was bigger and it was bigger enough to give me an extra five inches in the finished circumference, which was about what it felt like it was too big by. I hope any of that makes sense. So I'm now gonna rip it right back, start again and uh, with smaller needles and hopefully I will be off and away. I'm already down, so the, the pattern I think is a 4.5 needle recommendation. I'm already on a three, so I think my next option, if I want to, um, I, I think my next option I'm going to go down to a 2.5. I'm just going to go down half a needle size and see where that gets me um, because I do tend to loosen up as I start knitting um, long, long many many stitches round and round rather than just doing the swatch which is normally what about 60 odd stitches when you're knitting over hundreds of stitches instead I don't know I get my gauge gets looser I'm going to stop rambling I honestly feel like I'm being so boring I do apologize if this is going to be a bit of a rubbish podcast <laughs> okay so I have some other things watch out for the gray hair again um that uh are in bags. Now, one of them's downstairs. I have four projects that I want to begin. Now, I know I've just been talking about being monogamous and working on things over the course of each week, and I will be, but there are some things, there are four things that I really want to start. One is the Ziggy Interrupted Wrap, um, which I've got all the yarn for. It's all in a bag. I know what I'm doing, and I just need to ball up the yarn 
and get started and I'm really excited to do that. So that's downstairs, that is a waiting to happen any day project. I've also in my tiny little Empire State Building dodgy bag, I've got my yarn from Hannah of Hannah from Sheep's Alley, which is so, so pretty. Um, and I'm gonna make the hint of sophistication socks with this. And I've wanted to make these socks for a long time. It's a pattern by Jen Sheelan. Um, they were a giveaway on this podcast quite some time ago now. And Jen gave me a copy as well. Um, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it. Uh, the picture on my printout, it wasn't a terribly good printout. If that's not coming out very well, I'll pop a picture up on the screen. Uh, and it, they remind me of one of my favourite films, which is French Kiss with Kevin Klein and Meg Ryan. And I wanted to make these socks whilst watching that film, uh, which obviously is proving rather difficult to do anything of that kind, because as I say, we've got Lilia up until at least nine o'clock at night. Uh, so we don't really have very long in the evenings for watching films and Dan's not really keen on watching French Kiss. So... Um, yeah, the opportunities to do that are few and far between. But what I might do, it's my birthday at the weekend, I might see if I could maybe watch that on my laptop in bed. I don't know if my laptop plays DVDs, I might do a test run. And cast these socks on as my birthday treat. That might be nice. And then maybe that following week, from that Monday onwards, I could then make this my monogamous project. Um, because I'd really like to do that. That would be a really nice birthday thing to have a bit of time on my own, watch one of my films, which I love, and do a bit of knitting. That might be a nice idea. Hmm. The other thing is, I spoke about the Molly Hugh hat for the last couple of episodes, and I've chosen my yarn, and I've now chosen my bag. And I couldn't be happier because this is a bag, this is by Piggy's Market, I bought this. Um, last year and I absolutely love this bag it makes me so happy it makes me think of when we were in Denmark a couple of years ago which was one of the the best holidays I've ever had in my life um, and everyone had bikes and with flowers and it just reminds me of that um, and the yarn that I'm using is this and this oh it's just fallen apart and it just really looks nice with the bag and I'm just, yeah, delighted. Oh, here's the card for Piggy's Market. Um, I'm not sure if she's operating at the moment. I know a lot of small businesses are struggling massively at the moment uh, with everything that's going on. So um, yeah, so any anyone that I mention, yarn dyer, um, bag maker, the yarn dyer here is, oh, this is Knito, Knitology by Knit Crate, the, the, um, uh, the, the plain yarn, I'm not sure, but it's a commercial yarn. And the pattern designer is Shin, who is su sh shiny superhero. Um, oh, and she's also uh, 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 she's also in Denmark, so that's quite nice. That the bag reminds me of Denmark, and she's in Denmark. Um, and she is a shiny superhero on Instagram. And it's a Molly Hugh hat and it's a colour work hat, so I printed it in black and white, so you can't really see it very well. Um, and I spoke about it last time because I really, really want to start it. I'm really excited to start it. Um, colour work is not something I'm particularly strong in and I would like to do more of it to get some practice. So this is all now ready to go. So I'll ball up the yarn and then that's, you know, I'm halfway to getting started. <laughs> And then the next one that I've got all uh, in a bag and ready, this is my um, bag from the Tibet Relief Fund. It has got a yak on it, which I just find very amusing. But it's also got a zip, which makes it project project for a perfect bag or perfect for a project bag. Um, I bought this pattern when I went to the Southern Wall Show in September last year, which isn't really that long ago. And now I'm like, wow, I remember when we used to be able to go out to yarn festivals and mingle with other people. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the Fast Forward Rewind Socks by Fiona Hamilton McLaren. She is a little bit sheepish. She's not a little bit sheepish, that's her username. Um, I did a, a spinning class with her the year before at the Southern Wall Show the year before, a um, drop spindling class. I'm not very good at it, but she was really lovely. And I saw this pattern on her stand um, at the last one. And then I had these two yarns. This is um, a pure wool 
that I dyed myself using avocado and I did a video about that so if I remember I will put the link to that video on the screen um, it was in a vlog but I used the um, guidance of Cherie of the Ollie and Bella podcast for how to to do it but I'll put a link to the video of me um, doing it and then this other yarn it, I'm not sure what it is it feels like a um, completely um, woolly yarn and it was a gift from Lily of the Lily of Norway podcast. And I just thought that these two looked really beautifully natural and gorgeous together. And I can't tell if I'm actually showing that to you or not. Um, yeah, so I just thought they looked lovely. And I thought they would make perfect fast forward rewind socks. So I've put those all together ready as well. So I've got plenty of projects that I would like to start and plenty of projects that I would like to finish as well. So that should keep me busy, but I'm pretty much busy enough at the moment. <laughs> what with working from home and homeschooling, we're on the Easter holidays at the moment, so um, that's quite good. Uh, the girls will go back to their homeschooling routine on Thursday, which is when they would have been back to school. And Dan and I both go back to work tomorrow. I normally, I, I am part-time, I usually only work Wednesdays and Fridays, but I can't homeschool and work around that and Dan's working from home um, for a full day. Like I can't sit down and work from nine till five, two days a week and still do everyone's lunch and look after the house and deal with everything and do the homeschooling. It's just not possible. So I'm spreading my hours across the week. I'm doing three hours a day um, to cover my time, which is really, really quite stressful. Um, yeah, and I'm definitely doing more work than I would normally. <laughs> I'm definitely doing more hours than I should be because it's just how it ten how it happens yeah so work for me I normally really enjoy my work but I'm finding it very very stressful at the moment but anyway stop whinging um right what else have I got on here incoming okay so I was nominated by the lovely Bernadette now Helen who is Flora Honeypot on Instagram and everywhere in fact I might have Helen's card in here to show you. Yes, I do. There she is. She's Flora Honeypot and she is Flora Honeypot on Instagram, Facebook and Etsy. She makes the most gorgeous things and she's also just released her first crochet pattern. It's called Bowl of Hugs. I think it's called Bowl of Hugs and it's really, really beautiful. Um, and this is the card that she sent me. Um, a really pretty card. Oh, now dropped her business card. I'll pop them down, both down there so I can pick them up together in a minute. Um, so she put out a call on Instagram saying I've got a few people that I'm going to send hugs to in the post, like little boxes of goodies to cheer people up. And um, and I would like some nominations for some additional people. And lovely Bernadette nominated me. And now I feel utterly utterly undeserving of this because I don't I mean I am 100% grateful that someone would even want to mention my name for such a gorgeous surprise and I have messaged Bernadette and she said it was okay for me to say her name and say that it, um, she is Fleur, Fleur Day One I think I've got that right on Instagram and she nominated me just because she said I suffer from anxiety, as you know, I've spoken a lot about it on this podcast and she just nominated me because I suffer from anxiety and um, she thought I was doing all right, which is just the nicest possible thing anyone can let you know, really, that they think you're doing OK, um, despite everything, because at the moment, I think, it's for me anyway, I go into a kind of coping mode. Like the coping mode takes over from the anxiety, even though it's still there. And in many ways, some parts of my anxiety have, has got worse. Um, but there's nothing I can do about any of it at the moment. And to even worry about it or give in to it just seems in a way selfish. And um, if that makes any sense at all, and you just have to get on like the rest of the world. We are all affected by this in so many, many ways. And I just keep thinking, there were so many ways we could have been affected in it by this that would have been worse. So in many ways we are very, very lucky. Anyway, I'm rambling. The fact is she nominated me. I don't feel like I deserve it and I'm very, very, very grateful. So thank you, Bernadette. 
Bernadette for nominating me and also thank you to Helen for even thinking of this gorgeous idea and then accepting that nomination and sending me something and sending me such beautiful things which I'm going to stop rambling and show you now. So first of all she sent me some yarn. It's Hedgerow Yarns and it is the most stunning thing. It is called Fallen Leaves which you know, I'm, I am an autumn girl through and through, so I might have to knit these in the summer months dreaming of autumn. It is an 80% um, superwash merino, 20% nylon, and there's 365 metres in 100 grams, so you know it's going to be a nice plump one. It's a little sock set, there's a 20 gram mini here as well. Look at it, it is so beautiful. I don't think I've ever had any hedgerow yarns before. I don't think so anyway. It's so, so gorgeous. That's the label, just in case I didn't show it properly. It says hand dyed and hand painted yarn. Very, very pretty. And that, that um, I just, you know, thank you, Helen. That is a very, very generous, generous thing to send someone. And she sent me the beautiful card. She sent me some tea which now I've shown you, I can go downstairs and drink after this podcast, strawberry and elderflower infusion from Sainsbury's. I love their fruit teas. And then she sent me this gorgeous little, it's um, like a soft suede feel notebook and it's got the little leather thing that goes around it. So pretty, a bit like a traveller's notebook. Phoebe's actually got her eye on this, so we'll have to see. Phoebe's very um, notebook worthy. She really does keep... Um, good little diaries and journals and pictures and things so that's absolutely gorgeous and then she also sent me one of her little crocheted houses and this is just the most sweetest glorious thing look at that how neat and detailed is that little house oh it is just gorgeous it's not going to live here it's going to go center stage somewhere I just love it. So I feel very, very lucky to have that in my house. So thank you to Bernadette for nom nominating me and thank you to Helen for doing such a wonderful thing. Now, I would like, as I say, I don't feel very deserving of it and I would like to send something out there into the world myself. Someone's done a good turn for me and I would like to do the same for someone else. I cannot offer beautifully made crocheted houses or yarn. I don't have like um, a ton of stuff to give away. Most of my yarn that I have in my stash is either precious skeins that I bought myself or um, stuff that I have been given as gifts. Um, so it's not going to be yarn for my stash. Um, I might be able to dye some but that depends, actually no, let's be realistic. I would love to be able to dye some yarn, but I'm not going to be able to with the kids at home whilst I'm working at home. Calm down and be realistic. Okay, so what I would like to offer is one of my little crocheted hearts that I've been making, because I'm gonna be making some more, a letter and one of my pins. If you would like to nominate someone, perhaps someone who is struggling a bit at the moment, having a rough time, during a worldwide rough time, uh, maybe they're on their own, uh, maybe they're a key worker or a nurse or a delivery driver or someone playing a vital role out there in the world while this pandemic is um, is losing the words now, it, whilst this pandemic is rolling through the world. Um, or maybe you'd like to nominate yourself for any of those reasons or, or anything. The only thing I would say is you will need to be in the UK because I can't send anything at the moment um, overseas because I can't get to my local post office it's closed um, and I don't want to go out unnecessarily to travel I'm not going anyway to post things so I don't want to do an unnecessary journey it might be in the next couple of weeks I'll be able to do this again and go overseas when I maybe the restrictions are lifted a little bit but for now it's going to be in the UK because I can send all of those things the letter the badge and the heart in a large letter envelope and I have some of those stamps already at home. So I would like four people to send that to. Uh, in the UK, just stressing that again, in the UK and anyone you can nominate yourself 
or you can nominate somebody else. And I will do the draw via the comments. So I, you will need to watch the next episode to know if your nomination has um, been drawn. And I think I'll probably do it randomly, um, um, unless anything stops me from doing that. Anyway, there'll be four people in the next episode. So make sure you watch the next episode if you do nominate yourself or somebody else. So I hope that's okay. I just want to throw something back out into the world, a little bit of kindness. Someone's batted me some kindness and I'd like to bat some more kindness out into the world. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> right, this is a really rambling podcast. I'm really, really sorry. Okay, projects from your. So on my vlogs, um, we've been building dens in the garden. We've had a couple of really, really hot days. It's been up to about 23 d degrees here in the UK. And today it's gone right back down to something like 12. Um, it's a quite a grey, windy day today. But in the vlogs, we were building forts in the garden and we gathered up all the blankets we had, many of which are actually crochet blankets. And I had a few questions about um, the crochet blankets that were hanging up. So I thought I would tell you a little bit about them. So this is the first one. It is um, pink and purple. This is Lilia's one. It needs a wash because it's been all over the garden now. So after this, it's acrylic yarn. Um, after this, it is going in the washing machine for a good old freshen up. Um, and I went on to my Ravelry. I'm going to link to the project pages for these um, blankets below. So I went on to my Ravelry to sort of find out when I made it, what yarn I used and so on. It's the Attic 24 Neat Ripple Blanket Pattern. It's free and it's on her blog. It was one of the first patterns I ever used when I learned to crochet. I made a scarf and then once I was confident with that pattern, I then made a blanket for Lilia, who at the time was four years old. I made it for her fourth birthday and I finished it in August. No, so hang on. It wouldn't have been her fourth birthday because her birthday, oh, there's a kite. There's a kite flying in the sky just outside over over in the fields. There's a kite flying. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> well, I might have to go and try and film that from the loft. Hang on. probably a bit wonky now I think I managed to get it if I did I would have put it in before I came back and sat down right so where was I I've no idea now what was I saying anyway I'll, I'll kind of start again so this is Lilia's neat ripple blanket I made it for her in August 2010 is when I finished it it is almost 10 years old and the example of it being pegged up and pulled about that you saw in the vlogs if indeed you did see it um is just one example of the treatment that this blanket has had over the last 10 years so you can see really how beautifully well it has held up um you know it's a little worn it's getting a little fuzzy here and there it's acrylic yarn it's been in and out of the washing machine the yarn was a charity shop find i didn't remember that but that's what it says on my project page which just goes to show how important it is to keep notes on your Ravelry project page because I wouldn't have remembered that in a million years. And it was a real surprise to me that it's 10 years old. A real surprise. I can't even, belong, I can't even believe that I've been crocheting for that long. Oh, amazing. So this is Lilia's one um, and that is now going to go in the wash. And then the other one is exactly the same pattern. Um, and Lilia's one's made of DK yarn and this is worsted weight yarn. So it's a lot heavier and a lot thicker. And this is Phoebe's one and we call it the rhubarb and custard blanket. <laughs> uh, I don't know what all of the yarns are, but I do know that the grey and the pink. The grey and the pink, uh, sorry, not the grey, the pink and the yellow. <laughs> the yellow is called Ducky and the pink is called Pink Poodle. And they are both Vanna's Choice baby yarn. I don't know why I used that particular yarn and I must have got it from somewhere like Wool Warehouse. And I finished this in October 2014 in time for Phoebe's fourth birthday. 
Um, so this is about five and a half years old, which is amazing as well, and equally as um, abused. Although I would say that this yarn, as opposed to the other yarn, which I don't actually know what that is, it's just a basic acrylic DK. Um, this yarn has held up a lot better. It's kept its fullness and it's not pilled as much as the other one. So it's been a very good yarn. Um, as far as I remember, it's 100% acrylic and it's been a brilliant yarn for holding up as a blanket that gets a lot of use. So that is Phoebe's one. And like I say, they are both a free pattern uh, by Attic24 and that pattern is on her blog. And those are my two projects from your. Okay, I think that leads us on nicely to giveaway winners. Uh, which took a little while because there were a few to draw. So the first uh, prize that we had that I was speaking about in the last podcast was a lovely, lovely, generous donation from Beaches and ooh, from Beaches and Birdsong, which who is jo Josie, who's here in the UK, and she donated the most beautiful yarn from her. What was the name of this sock club? It was her Bird Lovers Sock Club, and this is the Gold Crest um, set. It's so beautiful. This is her Platinum 4 ply base, 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon, 425 metres in 100 grams. And you get a little information card about the bird that it's inspired by, and the gorgeous yarn. She does absolutely beautiful yarn. I've had a look at her shop, and a little cute birdie stitch marker. <laughs> uh, so that was the prize. So thank you, Josie, for donating that. I'm beyond thrilled to be able to give this away to a lucky winner. And Dan helped me this morning to draw some uh, random, um, I'll wrap that back up in a minute, some random numbers. And the winner for that yarn was post number 43. Oh, I can't read Dan's writing. The username is many P and you are Emily. I believe you are in the UK, but I can't remember. And you are the winner of the yarn. So yay, well done, Emily. Get in touch with me on either Instagram or Ravelry with your address and I will get that posted out to you as soon as I can. I'll have to work out how to get a parcel posted out, but I'll work it out. Don't worry, we've got a printer now, which might help. I might be able to print postage from the post office website and do it that way, but I'd still need to drop it off somewhere. Anyway, I'm thinking out loud now, very boring. <laughs> Get in touch with me, give me your address, we'll work it out. Okay, the other um, giveaway that we had on the last episode was from lovely Kim, who is Ivy May Originals, and she gave me eight copies of her elephant walking border pattern um, which is a crochet border for a blanket that looked like little elephants walking along it's so cute she gave me eight copies I was going to do four copies to give away here and four copies on the vlogs but I completely forgot to go on about it on the vlogs so I just figured I've had quite a few entries um, on Ravelry already I'll just draw eight winners from there so I have drawn eight winners and I'm going to try and reorder them as I read them out so that they're in order of number so the first one is number four, Mar Marta KR. You're the first winner. The second winner is number six, Paula Fralick. The next one was number eight, Tree Source Limited. I think that's you, Elaine. I think it's you. Um, that's Tree Source Limited. Number 10, Lil Angel SG2. Number 11, Fairy Storm. Number 12, Woolly Kim. Number 14, Cat's Eye Collective. Have I done them all? This is going to confuse me now. Oh, and the, far, the last one, number 21, Peregrinia. Um, so congratulations to those eight people. You are all winners. And I already have your Ravelry name because you entered on Ravelry. So I will let Lynn, uh, Lynn, I will let Kim have your Ravelry name so she can get a copy of that pattern over to you. So thank you so much for joining in. And thank you to everyone who entered those giveaways. Um, and thank you to everyone who stuck with me through this, what seems like both a very quick yet very rambling episode. Um, and I'm sorry I don't have very many interesting things to share with you at the moment. Um, hopefully by the next podcast in two weeks time that will change. 
do keep up with me on the vlogs. I talk about a lot of stuff there. And today I'm filming a little video about how I make a podcast. Well, sort of roughly how I um, use my phone to make a podcast and also how I make a vlog in a day. Um, it's not going to be terribly detailed, but I'm happy to do a more detailed one if the interest is there. It is one of the things I get asked a lot about um, how to you know, get started. I just use my phone and that's what I'm talking about on today's vlog. So that will come up under um, the, today's day. It will be the 13th of April um, vlog, which will be out tomorrow on Tuesday, the 14th of April. Right, I really am dragging out the rambling. Oh, one more thing before I go. Um, books. I am currently halfway through All the Light We Cannot See and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. But this book is still on my bedside table. I'm about a quarter of the way through this book. It's by Sarah Wilson and it's a book about anxiety. It's called First We Make the Book Beautiful. And one of the things that I had marked in here and I've spoken about before is something that had kind of left my brain a little bit. And I think it's something that I need to remember um, from today onwards, really. And that is that it's, this is a direct quote from the book. It's easier to do something every day without exception than to do something most days. When you say I'll walk four days a week, you debate which four days and wake up debating whether you can skip Tuesday. That, it really, I, I put my little post-it note in for that one. Um, it's about making a commitment to do the same thing, the same good habit every single day. So if you're gonna decide to exercise, just do it every day, regardless. Same time, every day, just do it then you don't have to think about it or stress about it or debate about whether or not you're going to do it or not because you just do it as part of your daily routine. And I was doing that with exercise and um, it was really working for me, but that slipped with the um, Easter holidays. So from tomorrow, I'm back at work. I'll be up every morning doing the Joe Wicks PE again. But not only that, I'm going to continue exercising over the course of the weekends as well. I'm going to get up and I'm going to say, right, get up, do my exercise and then start the day. I know it's easier said than done, so we'll see how that goes. But um, it's just a little bit of food for thought. Right, I'm gonna stop gabbling on and go and look at the videos that I've filmed and hope they're not too cringy. So until the next podcast, I will be on the vlogs and I'll see you in a couple of weeks or tomorrow, whichever you prefer. <laughs> see you soon, bye.